Amen. Well, it's always a good thing to um, be with you guys. Um, anyone who knows me knows that my heart is teaching God's people how to receive from them. Um, the amazing thing is God has not changed. He really hasn't. Um, and I think where sometimes we get a little thrown off is we don't understand um, how the condition of our heart, what we think, how it plays into our um, being able to walk with our Heavenly Father. Amen. Um, sometimes you might think, well, you know, um, what do you mean? Well, condition of my heart. What I mean by that is... With God, he's all about heart. You, you can't pull the wool over his eyes, you know. Um, why? Because that's where he dwells in you. He dwells in your heart. That's where the Holy Spirit is. And so the condition of your heart is so important. And what the enemy does, and he does it nonstop, is he tries to constantly either point out your faults, try to... to to get your focus changed. Or what he'll do is, you know, he'll try to talk you into believing that God isn't with you because I don't feel him. And if God was with me, why did this happen? You know, all of those things are sent to you to harden your heart. But that's the reason why the Lord gave us this physical example of the depth of his love. And that is the cross, sending his son who, in whom there was no sin, in whom he followed his father perfectly and then said, wait a minute, I, 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 got, a, I got a bunch of people, a bunch of kids that I got to have and you got to die for them. Why? Because they're that precious. And so... Whenever you're in doubt, whenever the enemy is trying to mess with your mind, what you got to do sometimes is go back to the cross and think about this. If God didn't withhold his son from me, then what other thing would he ever hold from me or hold against me? Especially now in today's time, because before you had a lot of people, you know, you could look in a lot of directions, whether even at school, when we were in school, we would pray, we would um, re recite, you know, we'd talk about the Declaration of Independence, I mean, all types of things, but now it's not like that. And as a matter of fact, I was uh, counseling a couple <laughs> yesterday, they'd been married 10 months, and I, I asked one question. I said, oh, by the way, was um, when with Job's wife, when that wonderful woman, that <laughs> wonderful supportive wife said, why don't you curse God and die to Job? <laughs> I said, um, what, what, what did Job do to you guys? Remember, I'm, I'm just talking to this young couple at 24 years old, and, 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 the, and the husband said, well, he left her. You know, he, he just left her. I said, no, no, that was probably a movie you watched. <laughs> and then I asked about um, uh, when the enemy, when Satan, I think it's chapter 3 of Genesis, came and tempted Eve, was Adam there? He said, no, Adam was someplace else. I said, no, that was the other movie you watched. Adam was right. And so you've got a whole generation that doesn't know the word. Yeah. Or they know it from movies, which is not accurate at all. Okay? And so now what you've got to do is, is getting to that place where your devotion life and your time spent with God in his word and in prayer you won't survive without it. When I say survive, what I mean is this. You won't stand in the victory that you've been given in Christ Jesus. Amen. Right? And so God gave us that word. Why? So we would know who we are. Amen. Because you can't go by what you see in the mirror. You're just, you're just looking at your hull. The real you is on the inside. And if you are born again, that means you are just like God. Oh. 
You're just like him. Amen. Created in his Amen. and after his. Likeness. Just like him. Amen. The only difference between you and your heavenly father is he is the creator. You don't create, but you take his creation and he gives you authority over it. But he is the self-existing one. But you're his child, Amen. just like Jesus. No different. He's the firstborn among many brethren. Amen. He's, he's the oldest. <laughs> Amen. And so what you have to do is you have to constantly renew your mind to this if you're going to walk like him. Amen. Amen. So if you're going to see miracles, if you're going to if you're going to see the works of God, I mean, for, you know, it should get to a point in your life where when you don't see manifestation of prayer, you're wondering why yeah. not when you see it, you're shocked. Right. Amen. And so I just wanted to share with you guys um, today on knowing who you are. Yeah. Amen. And when I teach. Um, I try. I teach. I try to teach as if you don't know anything, only because everyone in here is in a di on a different level spiritually speaking. Some are babes, you know. Some are mature, you know. Some are backslidden. I mean, I'm telling you. And when I say backslidden, what I mean is they're not trusting God. Amen. And so I just want to talk about a little bit who you are. And so. Being a doer of God's word, you must act on the word when you hear it. And let me just make sure. We know. Yeah, okay, good. When you hear it or you'll lose that revelation. Okay, so with the word of God, it's, it's food to you. What it does is it feeds your spirit. You say, well, John, how do you, how do you know? I mean, how do you feel that? How do you know that's happening? Well, as you eat the word, as you meditate on it, what happens is you, you grow stronger spiritually. You say, well, what does that look like? That looks like things that used to bother you a lot. They don't bother you as much anymore. That, that means that as you're going about your everyday business, different thoughts start coming to your mind like clean after, clean up after yourself. <laughs> see, see, let me tell you something. You think, you think this thing is real deep. If, if you're going after God, it's going to be real deep. You know, the, the piano is going to be shaking in the living room or something. <laughs> But the way the but the way the Holy Spirit teaches you, because he's what he's doing is he's always showing you who you really are. And so what he does is he'll he'll say things to you and you didn't even know it was God. You didn't even know it was the Lord. But he'll say things to you like you need to be on time. That's the way he talks, because he's always leading you to act just like him always and he starts with the small things stop being mean i told you before i got saved a lie was a very present help in the time of trouble <laughs> but after i got born again Man, a lie would stand out yeah. like that. You'd be like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> so from the day you received him, he's been speaking to you all the time. It just sounds like your thoughts because your mind has a voice. It, your mind has a voice. When Satan is talking to you, it sounds like your voice because it's, you're, it's spiritual, but your mind has the same voice. So you can't discern by the sound of the voice. You'll be deceived. But you got to test it. And that is, is it lined up with the word of God? If not, then it's a lie or it's coming from the enemy. And you got to watch it because Satan loves religion. He loves religion. Think about the Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be 
Thy name, thy kingdom, thy will be on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread. Now check this out. The, Jesus is teaching you to ask your father to meet the needs that you have. He hasn't even mentioned anything about sin yet. That's good. Trespasses. Hasn't touched it yet. Why? Because that ain't the main focus. That's good. Before he tells you to forgive others, he says, ask your father for what you need. That's good. It's so non-religious. And so the enemy, if, if, if half of us would have thought of that prayer, it would, the first thing would have been, Lord, forgive me. We would have started with that. But that's not the way your father thinks. And so now what you do is when those thoughts come to your mind about, oh, I just need, oh, I need to pray more. I need to fast more. You need to stop that. <laughs> Go get on a tricycle and enjoy yourself. <laughs> Oh, you guys should have. Oh, Danny, I, I love Danny. I love Danny. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so, James 1 and 23, this is what it says. If anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. So anybody who hears the word and doesn't do it, he's because the word is a mirror of who you are on the inside. So it's like a man, he gives a comparison of a man observing himself in a natural mirror, but if he's only a hearer and not a doer, when he leaves that mirror, he'll forget who he was. Because you can't go by who you are, by how you're talking, how you look, and how you feel. You've got to go by who you are, by the one who paid you, the one who's looking at your heart. He knows what's in you. He knows your potential. You're his son. Yes. Think about it. You to have children. Your child comes up to you begging, like, you know, like, a, like he's a servant. You would be like, what is your problem? <laughs> you know, my son is 40, 41 years old. He'll still come and go in the refrigerator. He does not ask. <laughs> and let me tell you something. Boys at any age can eat. How many of you know that? <laughs> In fact, only because of the connotation that the world gives it, you know, in my, I used, you know, I would never say it, but, but my sons are, are like cereal killers because they don't get a regular bowl of cereal. They get a Tupperware dish and pour, and, and listen, they'll leave enough in the box for you to get mad. <laughs> <laughs> when, you know, you got your bowl, you got your milk out your bowl, you look at the box, you put the milk back in the refrigerator. <laughs> so you look, when you're looking in the Word, you're looking at a mirror. It says in verse 20, for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he is, because you can only know what type of person you are from God's Word. God's Word is your mirror for what's on the inside of you. How many things can you do in Christ? I can do all That's what's on the inside of you. Are you victorious over the world? Yes. What is this victory that overcomes the world? Even your believing it. You have to believe it. Your faith is according to your faith. And so you got to meditate. You got to meditate. You got to meditate. You, you got you to get in your mind that, wait a minute, God has given me everything that pertains to life and godliness. So when you're looking to get critters out of your attic, you can pray to God and say, Lord, I need a, a critter detective. I need somebody to get these squirrels out of the attic. And the Lord will provide. Man, we had something, me and Bridget are laying in the bed and hear little, you know. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no, no, we won't. <laughs> so I prayed that morning. I said, Lord, Father, I need something to get these squirrels out of this attic. Because I ain't going, to, I'm not going in that attic and dealing with no squirrels. <laughs> I've seen too many movies. It's not good. <laughs> so, so I'm coming off of 355 that day. 
and at the light and look over and there's a truck that says Critter Detectives with the phone number. <laughs> hey y'all, I found out, and I've shared this before, but I found out that whatever you're interested in, God is interested in. And I remind you guys of this all the time and, and, and Natalie and Danny can relate to this so much more now that don't ever think you're a better parent than God is. Because before Natalie had that, her first child, how many, we got five now? No, three. <laughs> before, <laughs> before Natalie, before my daughter had her first child, they had a crib, they had a place prepared before the child was ever born. Before you were ever born, God had your place prepared. Psalms 139, it says that every moment of your life has been wrote out. Every moment? Who are you? That's what the angels asked in Psalms. It says, what is man that you're mindful of him? Because they had never, the angels had never seen anything God made that God gave dominion over. All the works of his hands. They never saw it before. And the angels are our servants. Who are you? Who are you? God doesn't even transgress your decisions. He gives you gifts and then you use them the way you want to. He doesn't make he doesn't take away the gift cuz you're not doing right. That's good. You can be a musician doing any type of music but he gave you the gift. Why? Because you're made like him. He won't touch it. Now, you will stand before him and give an account of what you did with what he gave you. Who are you that God would give you a gift and it's yours? And so what he does is he just, with loving kindness, I draw you. With loving kindness. So even when you go off and and, and do stuff you know is wrong when you come back to him. He's always drawing you, always drawing you. Who are you? You're his child. He whom he'll never leave. So the word is where the only place you're going to be able to see the reflection of who you really are. So God's word is a reflection of who we are as born-again believers in Christ Jesus because God's word is a discerner of the heart. In other words, it knows your heart. He knows your heart really better than you do because yeah. we're always fighting but between our mind and our heart trying to figure out what's real, you know, who we really are. And the only way you can really know who you are, where you're at, is what you do under pressure. That's the only time you see your heart. When pressure comes, boom, now we're going to find out what you really believe, and you're going to find out too. God already knows. That's why he allows pressure. So you can see what's in your heart. You know, Peter, I don't care what they do. No matter what they do, I'm not going to leave you. I'm going to die with you. Peter, you're going to deny me. No, I ain't. <laughs> Man. So he, he's got his dukes up. He's ready. Because Jesus has said, you're going to deny me. Here comes the, the priest. Here comes the priest servant. Peter goes back to his old habits and cuts his ear off, you know. And Jesus is like, man, you don't know what spirit you are. You know, puts his ear back on, right? <laughs> so Peter's ready because in his mind he's heard what Jesus said. And he said, no. But then here comes a little girl. They says, aren't you one of? Now, watch it. He's watching Jesus being beat. He's never seen that before. He's, he's watching him being slapped. He's never seen this. So this stuff is going through his mind, and he's looking at this. He can't believe what he's seeing because Jesus has gotten out of every other thing he, he's ever been involved in. When they try to throw him off the city, he just passed off the um, city edge. Uh, they just passed through the midst of them. When they tried to stone him, they couldn't. But now he's getting slapped. So he's watching this, and then this girl says, Hey, aren't you one of them? 
I, I don't know what you're talking about. No, no, no. You're one of them, and then he, he, your speech deceives you. It, you're one of them, and he starts cursing. So check this out. Jesus tells them, hey, you're going to deny me three times. But, watch this, when you return, strengthen your brothers. You knew he's coming back, right? So check this out. What Jesus says is true. It's going to come to pass. He said, you're more than a conqueror. Why is it so easy to believe the negative, but so hard it seems to believe the positive? Oh, my goodness. Amen. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> so I, I go to Bermuda, you know, with the insurance company I'm working for, and half of them, the luggage didn't make it right and all of that stuff. But we, are, we prayed. Me and my wife prayed. And then, you know, we're up in the hotel. First thing, I'm freaking out because in the taxi ride in, in, in Bermuda, they're on the opposite side of the road, you know. And so you're trying to gauge, okay, we're going to turn this way when we get to this intersection. It goes, you're like, ah! So I just shut my eyes, right? And I, I was over in Europe for a while, but that's when I was a teenager. This is much later. But anyway... We, we, so we want to go out and enjoy ourselves, so we get dressed, we're going to go out by the ocean, and then this man, on the island, it's, now it's storming by the time we get back, get ready to go out. So we, now we go back, change back, sit down, when we come back down, now the sun is out. Then we go back, change, we go back out, and now it's raining again. And so I said, okay, in the name of Jesus, right now, when we get to the top of that hill, in Jesus' name, clouds, you will move, and sun, you will come out. And so me and my wife walk out in the rain up toward the hill. And by the time we get to the top of the hill, the clouds have moved and the sun has come out. Amen. Who are you? I give you authority over all the works of my hands. Peace be still. And the disciples are like, what, what manner of man is this? Now, I need you to look in that mirror and say, what manner of man am I? Wow. That's good. That's good. You know, you have to renew your mind to this because you've been taught for so many years a lie. Amen. So it says here, but the part uh, I became a new creation in Christ Jesus when I was born again. But the part that was totally reborn is unseen. It's the hidden man of the heart. So 1 Peter, third chapter, third verse, this is what it says. It says, do not, and this is the New Living Translation, don't be concerned about the outward beauty or fancy hairstyles, expensive jewelry, or beautiful clothes. Keep going. Amen. You should clothe yourself instead with the beauty that comes from within. The unfading beauty of a, of a gentle and quiet spirit which is so precious to God. So on the inside, you've got this gentle, quiet spirit. Now that's who you are. I don't care if you're acting in a rage because you're mad about something. That's not the real you. You're acting. You're acting. The only way you can know what's in you is you've got to look at the mirror of your spirit, the word of God, and you are gentle. That's who you are. So now we got to work through and find out what, what type of unforgiveness, what happened in your life to cause you to lose yourself. And then what lie have you? Well, I'm Italian. And you know, that's just the way Italians are. That's a lie. <laughs> Yeah, I got some very good friends that are Italian. I know, I know. Listen, are you kidding me? <laughs> they said one well, at the at the insurance company I work with had a, a few uh, Jane Franz, like a bunch of Italian friends, and they said we have uh, we have made you one of ours. And somebody else said I don't know if that's a good thing or not. <laughs> All right, so um, Colossians th uh, third chapter. Second and third verse is what it says. Set your mind. See, see, 
you, you, gotta, you actually have to consciously set your mind. You have to change what your focus, your focus, your focus. Set your minds on what things above, not things on the earth. Keep going to the next verse. For you died and your life is hidden. The word of God is what shines a light on the hidden part of you. You actually died. That's why the way you do things change when you gave your life to Christ. Why? Because the old man died. That part that was not like God. And now you've got to renew your mind to who you really are. It's like you um, living in a household for 30 years and then finding out that those weren't your parents. And now you start searching out who your real parents are and you find out that they're wealthy. And then what happens is you see the gifts in, within your parents, your, your actual biological parents, and you start, it starts making sense the way, why you think the way you do. It's the same way with God. You get born again, you find your real parent. And then you watch the way he does things and it makes sense because that's the way you want to do things. Amen. And so now you got this fight going on because you see, you see what your father does. You want to be just like him, but you got this other thing pulling you, you know. And so now what do you have to do? You, you have to forsake. It's like forsaking your own life. It's, it's forsaking your own self. I talked to a, a friend. He said, man, you know, him, him and his wife are separated. But she asked him to go to an event. And he didn't want to go, but she wanted him to go. And he said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go. I'll go. And he, he, it was making him so angry. But he said, I'll, I'll do it. You know, I hate John. I just did it for her sake. I said, do you know what you just did? I said, when you went, you worshiped God. Yeah, when you went, you worshiped God because you said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And that's how you live a life of worship. That's good. You should always be saying, you know, I just, ooh, I want to get in front of that person and, and hit my brakes and, and cut them off, you know, like they just did too. But you say, nevertheless, not my will, your will be done. Yeah, I want to talk about I see what this president is doing or what else, uh, some other president's doing. I don't like it. I want to talk about them. I want to dog them out. But, Lord, you said give honor to those who are in authority. So I'm not going to allow that stuff to come out of my mouth. I want to pray for President Biden. Father God, fill him with the, the wisdom that he needs. Lord God, help him. Send people to speak into his life that he might know you, that he might know you better, Lord God. You got to pray. The Lord said, pray for where you're living that you might live in peace. Yeah. So you can't join in anymore. Amen. And there becomes a separation, and it may be in your house. Yes. So now you're talking about the price that you pay for following Christ. All of a sudden, you... Natalie, do you love God more than this man? Yeah. Yep. Danny, do you love the Lord more than you love this woman? They'll stay married. Amen. Because it's all in, yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, you know, that was like, yeah. You know, 25 seconds later, that, that's, you know, now before they had three kids, it would have been, <laughs> now nah, it's like, <laughs> no, but at, hey, me and my wife, be, at 22 years old, I said, Lord, because I love him more, I said, I'm going to give her 100% and expect nothing from her. It's 20, that's pretty good for a 22-year-old. <laughs> I'm going to give her 100% and expect nothing from her. And whatever she gives me, I'll consider it a bonus. Now my marriage is no longer based on her. That's good. My marriage is based on me. Wow. That's good. And so the mindset is serve her, serve her, 
serve her. And then God says, because you're taking care of my daughter, John, I'm going to bless you. I use my wife to worship God. Why? Because I read and found out how he feels about her, Christ and the church. And so what did it do? It empowered me to consider her before myself. But before I learned that, there were issues. You know. See, we don't ever do what what I want to do. We just do what you want to do. Well, that's because, you know, and we just going back and forth. Why? Because we're trying to change each other. (laughs) Because that, and that selfishness is based in selfishness. But I'm saying that word, what it does is it gives a reflection of how Christ feels about me. And then he says, now, I want you to imitate me. Amen. All right. God's word is a true reflection of who we are as born again believers. Oh, that's so important. I was born again by the word of God. Therefore, it takes God's word to reflect who I am now. At 1 Peter 1 and 23, this is what it says. It says, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which abides for us. So you've been born again. You born again? By the word of God. Absolutely. So when you read the word, you're reading you. You're reading who you are. Because that's what you were born again by, his word, right? Go to Hebrews 4.12. Thank you. For the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. It's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And so he's given you his Holy Spirit so you can know where you are. You can know, you can discern between the thoughts in your mind and the thoughts of your heart. It's a discerner. So what am I saying? I'm saying that what you should be doing in your life is always judging yourself. Why? You could do it by the Holy Spirit. What do I mean by that? I mean that you can look at the why you did something as opposed to what you did. How can you do that? Because you're made like God. You say, well, John, what 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 does that mean? I mean, where do you use that? You use that in your, in your business decision. Because you're trying to figure out, is this God or not? And you can't, you can't go by whether the decision to do a certain task worked out well or not. You can't say if it worked out well as God. If it didn't, it's not. Uh-uh. Satan gets in stuff. But what can you do understanding this? You go back. And look at your original motive, why you decided to do it. And whatever your original motive was will determine whether it was godly That's or good. not. So, you know, I could, I could stand here. I mean, I could teach this and go into such depth how you use that word to judge, to judge and to lead you on the right path. It's all, it's all in you. It's all in you. It's who you've been made. You just have to know how to use the tools that God has given you so you can walk successfully in this life. Amen. He said that he will guide you with his own eye. The eye of the word, that is your guidance. And I'll, I'll end with this. I was doing a little, you know, the Lord had delivered uh, my son Wow, he, he just kind of went off, and I've shared this before. At six, 16, you know, he just kind of went off uh, the deep end. And what I mean by that is, you know, you can't make me go to church. Um, good is boring. And, and then I'm going to police stations here and there. They don't, don't know what's going on. And I went to God, and the Lord began to teach me concerning what to do. And it was so powerful that I wrote a little book. But while I was writing, I'd never wrote, written a book before. It's just a little mini book. But while I was writing it, you know, I'm constantly hearing, oh, yeah, that's what the world needs now, another book. <laughs> oh, yeah, what are you now, an author? Oh, you think you're, this is what I'm hearing while I'm writing it. Yeah. But what I did is I went back to the original motive, which was to help other people. 
And with that original motive, it empowered me to keep writing. That's good. Man, that book has been such a blessing. To, just in our little bookstore, I have over 2,000 of them. That's a, awesome. You have to go back to your original motive. And when you began to do that in the task, or smarter yet, know what your motive is when you're beginning. That's good. If it's not right, don't even do it. Amen. Father God, I thank you so much for your kids. Lord, I thank you, Father God, for the gifts and talents you've given them and the call that you have on each one of their life. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that if it's been anything stopping them, any condemnation or anything like that, Lord God, that you would show them that, Father God, that they would be able to see wherever there's something that may be holding them back from walking in the fullness of your call. And I pray, Lord God, that you would continue to give them revelation, insight, on who they are, that they might glorify you in every aspect of their life. And Lord, I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God.